How many people have ever failed? Right, and most of you are going to have your hands up because failure is a regular and normal part of life. In fact, some may say that in order to be successful, one has to fail. However, we teach children to avoid it. When a child is young, they are taught that the sky is the limit. You could be anything you want to be as long as you put your mind to it. And then we place children in environments that instill the fear of failure. We rate them based on metrics used to show how they excel and fail. Think to yourself for a moment, how often have you stopped yourself from doing something truly extraordinary just because you thought that you would fail? Not because you didn't have the raw talent or the resources, just because you thought it was a failure waiting to happen. Failure isn't something that we should run from. It's something that we should embrace as a learning tool, not just in our everyday lives, but in this case, education. Now let's think for a second about a time of year that everyone tends to make lofty goals. New Year's Eve. Now, a staggering 90% of people who make New Year's resolutions don't actually end up accomplishing them. Now, I have personal experience with this. In 2017, I watched Netflix, What the Health? I don't know if everyone's familiar with that, but it literally scared me straight from eating meat. And because it scared me so bad, I said, in 2018, I'm going to be a vegan. And so I got my couscous and my chickpeas and my black beans, and I said, I am not going to eat meat. And then the Super Bowl happened. <laughs> and I don't know if any of you guys know who won the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. Right. The Philadelphia Eagles. And guess where I live? Philadelphia. And everyone knows the slogan. If you know it, say it with me. Fly, eagles, fly, right? But how can you fly like an eagle without wings? I needed chicken wings. It was really, really necessary. And that was literally the end of my vegan journey. And I never tried again because I was like, I'm not about to fail. And I feel that's how a lot of us feel. We don't try again because we are so afraid that if we try something, we'll fail. Now, if we're going to redefine what failure is, we have to know what it is presently. So failure, as described by Webster's Dictionary, is a lack of success. But I challenge, just because you lack success, does that really mean you're a failure? Now, let's take an example that everyone's pretty familiar with. Thomas Edison and the creation of the light bulb. So Thomas Edison experimented with thousands of different filaments in order to find one that would light long enough in order to make the light bulb useful. Re-engineering the way that we light our homes, city streets, and businesses. Now, it's true that Thomas Edison failed. However, all of those failures led ultimately to his success. So in redefining failure, we don't look at it as a lack of success. No, we look at it as a lesson towards our next epiphany. Well, the truth of the matter is failure is hard, OK? You don't want to have an expected end and then you fail repeatedly over and over and over again. It can make you feel unaccepted and unworthy. Professor Martin Covington of the University of California discusses this in his performance anxiety study. He says that 
If a person believes that they will not succeed, they will literally engage in self-preserving activities. And what that actually means is that if I think that I'm going to fail, I'm literally going to avoid the thing that I think is going to make me feel negative about myself. However, he later says that if we value ourselves based on things like appearance, status, popularity, then we fail to value ourselves on the mere fact that we are human beings. And failure is a very necessary part of the human experience. Now, if failure is so necessary to the human experience, then why do we teach children to avoid it? I would propose that we start to incorporate learning from failure in the classroom. And how we do this is by inculcating experimental learnings into the classroom where we focus more on the process rather than the product. Now, I've seen this work on the software teams that I've had the opportunity of working with over the course of my career. Now, how we learn from failure is by using something called the Agile methodology and failing fast. Now, what is the Agile methodology? The Agile methodology is just an approach to building complex software products. Now, failing fast is a strategy within the Agile methodology, which says that without too much upfront research, I'm going to try an experiment, and I'm going to see whether it excels or it fails. And if it fails, I'll quickly get rid of it and move on. And the reason why this is so useful when it comes to learning is that we don't waste so much time and money and upfront resources on trying to figure out whether something's going to work. We just try it and see if it works. Now, modern agile advocate Joshua Kowarski actually used this when teaching his daughter how to ride a bike. Now, he taught his daughter how to ride a bike on something like this. It's a balance bike. So what a balance bike is, is it's a bike with no pedals, and it literally just teaches a child how to balance. Because balancing on a two-wheeler bike is essentially the most important part of riding it. Now, he was also, te he was also with other children who were on tricycles, and he found that although his daughter had hiccups and she fell off the bike a couple times, she learned how to ride a two-wheeler faster than the child on the tricycles. Now, I've seen this strategy work on, the on over 20 teams that I've had the opportunity of using learning from failure on. I've seen that when teams are allowed to experiment and fail, they actually learn 50% faster in their software aptitudes, practices, and processes. Another example of this is the marshmallow challenge. Now, I did this with about a group of seven-year-olds. And so what the marshmallow challenge is, is you take some sticks of spaghetti, a marshmallow, tape, and string, and you ask these groups to build freestanding towers. Now, after an 18-minute iteration, we asked the children, what did you learn from building these towers? Some said, well, I, got I had to look at everybody else to see what they were doing so I could try to mimic what they were doing. Some said, I had to make a plan so that I didn't waste resources. The fact of the matter is, a lesson was never taught. However, these children left with lessons that they could not just use in their everyday lives, but in a classroom. So how we incorporate this in a classroom is through experimental learning. Again, praising the process and not the product. So what that means, if we go back to the marshmallow challenge, we don't praise the fact that they made the tallest tower. We praise the fact that they got a strategy for making the tower, period. That's how we teach children to learn from failure. Carolyn Dweck, 
from Stanford University actually did some studies about this. She said that in her study on the growth mindset that a child can learn from failure if they have a growth mindset, which means that I could become more intelligent through using good strategies and hard work and learning from others. As long as a child has this mindset, then learning from failure, failure is very, very possible. As long as these failures are clean and done within a considerable or moderate amount of risk. Now, if we teach children to learn and embrace failure, instead of being so scared of it, think of all the things that we could have happen to us in this next century. Think about it, we had Google, Facebook, Instagram, just in the last three decades, what else can we have? If we teach people to learn from failure and to make something better out of it, instead of being scared of it. When we teach people and when we teach children to learn from failure, we make epic fails epic opportunities. We turn pain into poetry. We turn high risk into high rewards. We turn pioneering into discovery. And we turn ideas into innovations. Thank you. <laughs>